The price of oil is up, gas-guzzling cars are out, and a race for a fuel-free, practical electric car is on. It includes the usual suspects, Detroit, Japan, Germany. But here's a surprise. A newcomer with no experience at building cars has entered the race, Silicon Valley. The jury is still out on whether electric cars can ever really be practical. But the computer geeks in California are betting that their inventiveness can beat out Detroit's cumbersome bureaucracy in producing a viable electric. One of the reasons electric cars have never taken off has been battery technology. A few years ago, someone wondered, why not use the batteries they put in laptop computers called lithium-ion batteries? That's when the environmentally conscious high-tech industry in California jumped in. This is the first all-electric sports car, the Roadster, made by Tesla Motors, a small startup in I'm Northern California. Yeah, That's you can cool. floor it. No problem. It'll be fine. All right, here I go. You ready? The chairman of Tesla, Elon Musk, says the Roadster can accelerate from zero to 60 in four seconds. Oh. It's propelled by more than 6,000 finger-sized laptop batteries and not a single drop of oil. Silicon Valley's Elon Musk made his fortune by inventing PayPal, the online banking service. He launched Tesla five years ago with no experience at all in the car business. Now he has over a thousand orders for the Roadster from people like George Clooney and Governor Schwarzenegger. They can afford it. This beautiful Roadster costs a fortune. Hundred, Nine, yeah, 109000 $109,000. It's a deal. <laughs> it's a deal. And our car is twice the efficiency of a Prius. So a Prius is a gas guzzling hog by comparison with our cars. He says the Roadster can go over 200 miles before you have to plug it in to any ordinary wall outlet. Four to 30 hours for a full charge. It's this very easy. It's just like uh, plugging in a hairdryer. Super oh, simple. Yeah? yeah. Even a girl could do it. Is that uh, what you're trying to say? Even, yes, even a girl. <laughs> From the beginning, Musk wanted to prove that innovative and nimble Silicon Valley could build a better green car than lumbering, bureaucratic Detroit. Outside of Detroit, everybody thinks Detroit is dumb. Well, they think you're hidebound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same thing. Bob That's Lutz, vice chairman of General Motors, is the man in charge of developing their new yeah. products. And he says he owes Tesla and its Roadster a debt of gratitude. If a small Silicon Valley startup believes that they can do a commercially viable electric car, are we going to sit here as General Motors and say, well, a guy in California can do it, but we can't? Now, that didn't sound very good. That's embarrassing. So, yeah. And so the race was on, with Lutz overseeing the research and development of the Chevy Volt, which is a four-door family electric. So you see that it's got twin screens. The Volt is not purely electric. It's called a plug-in hybrid. It'll drive on battery power alone for 40 miles. Go beyond that, and a small gasoline engine kicks in to recharge the battery while you keep driving. 78% of trips in the United States are under 40 miles a day. If all those people had volts, you would have 78% of Americans basically never using another drop of gasoline. Everything about the Volt, he says, works like a conventional car, except there's no noise. There's one thing we can do for people who miss the sound of the engines. We sell them a CD oh, the with various <laughs> engine sounds. <laughs> so you'd be able to pick Ferrari V12 or, uh, you know, Le Mans Corvette. A car that can go up to 40 miles before it uses any gas at all. GM is already touting the car in TV ads, even though they don't yet have a working prototype. The real trick on the car is software. The car needs to know where home plate is. So if you, for some reason, have gone from work instead of directly home, you've gone shopping, and you're starting to run out of battery on the way home, the computer will tell the gas engine, look, he's five miles from home, only run for three minutes because he only needs enough to get home. What about safety? In 2006, Dell was forced to issue the biggest recall in electronics history when its lithium-ion batteries burst into flames. Which Lutz says GM has solved um, that problem with like its batteries. 
but they need a lot more testing to check how durable and reliable they are in extreme weather and real road conditions. Still, Lutz insists the Volts will be in dealerships in 2010. We've spoken to people who say, Lutz is crazy. He, yep. They cannot do this by then. It's right. just not going to happen. Right. We'll see. Somebody's going to have egg on their face. It was GM with egg on its face in the late 90s for killing off its first electric cars, the EV1s, and then crushing them into scrap metal, which fueled theories that GM had conspired with the oil industry the electric car. I think even our, our lawyers now would admit that perhaps crushing them was not the smartest thing in the world to do. I, I get emails that say, I hope you enjoy the billions that you got from the oil companies, you swine. It's that history and his record of promoting SUVs and the Hummer that make people wonder about Lutz's new role in developing GM's new green cars. So let's talk about your own personal carbon footprint. Yes. How many helicopters do you own? I have one and my wife has one. She's a uh, commercial pilot. Yeah. How many uh, jets do you have? I have two. Now, you have a terrible reputation with environmentalists, as you well know. No, no actually, some of them kind of like me, but go ahead anyway. Well, they don't like what you said global about warming. global warming. Right. Do you want to repeat what you said about global uh, no, of, warming? Of course not, because this is a family network. That's, you don't that's great. think there's global warming? Is that really true? Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into this because... Because uh, you got into so our, much trouble when you said it the first time. <laughs> that could be right, yeah. What Lutz said in January is man-made global months. warming is a crock of sh**. Well, so he's no environmentalist. But he is a realist. Gone are the gas guzzlers. To save GM, he knows he has to come up with gas-efficient cars. But Detroit is broke. While in California, things are buzzing. The venture capitalists who funded the information superhighway are now pouring money into the actual highway, backing at least 30 small startup companies. Ray Lane is a senior partner at Kleiner Perkins, the venture capital firm that helped start Google and Amazon. Now he's investing in three electric car startups. When I first t started talking about the possibility of investing in automobiles, my partners thought I was crazy. We're not out of the woods yet. I haven't proven I'm not crazy yet. One of his startups is Fisker Motors that's making the Karma, a four-door plug-in hybrid like the Volt, with some added G-Wiz features. This is a solar roof. It's a solar roof. So this will generate electricity. It will not generate enough to drive the battery, though, like the engine does. Yeah. It will drive enough electricity to maybe cool the car while it's in the parking lot. Some of the other startups in California are less conventional. Like this all-electric, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Aptera due out this Christmas. But one issue with all these cars is that much of the electricity to power them would come from burning coal, which produces greenhouse gases. So they're not necessarily the perfect green solution. Four years ago, we had the hydrogen car. Three years ago, there was ethanol. Mm -hmm. And now it's the electric car. Right. In each case, there were such problems with them that everybody's focus moved on to the next thing. Isn't that going to happen again with these electric cars? It, it, it could. I mean, that, that, is, wow. that is what Silicon Valley is all about. A good entrepreneur that fails, we will pick that person up, fund them again to do something new if it's a good, if it's a good idea. Is there any thinking with, uh, with these 30 little Henry Fords mm -hmm. that we've got to crush Detroit? Some. I mean, there was a, a company, pretty well known, Tesla, yeah. uh, for a long time believed that what would be their advantage is they had no car people, no Detroit people. <laughs> We're going to build uh, a vehicle company exactly like we build a computer company. Uh, so it's when you have your car repaired, it's going to be going, like going into your Apple store. We'll give you a latte. You what? These are real statements. So. They've certainly found out you can't, you cannot build a car company without car people. There, there's sort of this feeling of, uh, especially in Silicon Valley, that 
people in the automobile business aren't very smart. And then they get into it and they find out, holy mackerel, look at all this government regulation, look at what everything costs. And then once they're into it, they figure out, hey, this isn't an easy business after all. And uh, I think that's about the point where, where Tesla is right now. But these startups out in California don't have the union problems, the health care costs, the labor issues. These startups don't have boardrooms. They don't have nervous shareholders. Yeah, but they have no experience in the car business. And, and you think and that outweighs all of absolutely, this? Absolutely, sure. It is true that Tesla is now hiring lots of people with Detroit on their resumes. Their next project is development of a four-door family sedan that'll compete with the Chevy Volt. Did you used to think this was going to be easier than it was? Yes, I probably thought it would be a little easier. How much more has the project cost than you thought it was going to cost so far? Um, twice as much? Probably, Three times as much? No, probably, probably twice as much, I think, ish, thereabouts. How much did you put into this company? Oh man, about $55 million. $55 million of your own money. Yeah, it's a little more than I expected. No one's figured out how to make an electric car cheap. Tesla plans to sell its four-door sedan for $60,000. Let's at GM wants the Volt to be more of an everyman car. How much is it gonna cost? me, the consumer. I started out very optimistically and said, okay, well, I think we can sell this thing for 20000 And that turned out to have been like one of those, I wish I hadn't said that. And then we started hoping for well below thirty, And now we're trying to keep it south of forty. Forty thousand dollars is not an everyman car by any stretch. That's true. To get buyers, GM will have to sell the car at a loss bad news for a company already burning a billion dollars in cash every month. I'll tell you what, we can afford a tiny little loss on a car, but we can't afford a $20,000 loss per car. That's just not on. That's because GM is in financial straits. Bob Lutz is trying not only to produce a moneymaker, but also prove with the Chevy Volt that his company and his town are still the address for innovative cars. So a lot about General Motors' reputation and image is riding on this. That is probably an understatement. So basically, in your mind, it has to succeed. Of course it does. For, for what it's worth, I stake my reputation on it.